Good evening, Agile Acquisition Enthusiasts, and welcome back to the Underground Digital Tiki Bar. It's Friday night, and that means it's time for another episode of Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol. So cheers. But first, go ahead and click the subscribe button below. That way you will get notified when new videos like this come out and you'll always be on the cutting edge of all things Agile Acquisition. So what is an IGCE as it's typically called, the Independent Government Cost Estimate? Well, it's independent, meaning done by the government, cost estimation of what it's going to take to fulfill the requirement that they're hoping to proceed with. It's a requirement uh, to create one before every acquisition. It's also necessary to get the, the budget. So they put this forward and, and it gets approved or doesn't get approved. And it also determines which thresholds the acquisition is gonna be subject to. Is it below the micro purchase threshold, the simplified acquisition threshold, so on and so forth. Also determines what approvals will be needed uh, for certain types of contracting, whether or not you can set it aside or not. So it's really important. Um, Really important. Traditionally, how are the independent government cost estimates created? Uh, they use all kinds of fancy tools, Monte Carlo, they they take historical acquisitions that seem of like and kind for what they're trying to do. They make some averages, some estimates, all of these numbers fall into this little black box and they spit out these enormous uh, numbers, typically. <laughs> and uh, the IGCE is, is created from that. Sometimes they'll even use lines of code. Boo, don't do that. Lines of code taken to produce a previous piece of software are in no way predictive for the amount of work it's going to take to pr produce a new solution. Avoid at all costs anyone who is telling you to do lines of code for estimation purposes. That's how they're typically made. Unfortunately, when we use historical contracts like that and those methodologies for determining a cost estimate, we tend to get really big cost estimates because we're looking at an entire program. And as you know, when we talk about Agile, we like to talk about how can we deliver value to end users as soon as possible. Let's scale down the requirements to get functional products out to the users effectively and efficiently. So how should you do it for Agile? Basically, how many people do you think it's going to take how many teams of those number of people do you think it's going to take to produce effective and efficient uh, code, right, or products? And so there's some fundamental rules we can use, right? So an average agile development team is six to 12 people. So if you want to have an estimate that's giving you a little bit more flexibility, you would go more to the 12 side. If you want to have a, an estimate that's going to be more cost conservative, you would stay on the six side. Uh, you might consider tools that need to be purchased or travel and things like that. And then you have to evaluate not how many teams could you possibly buy with the amount of money you might have, uh, how many teams you can manage to deliver continuous product because there's a process involved in management, especially if you've never done it before. Having more than one or two teams to start with is pretty risky. True story, went into a meeting to talk with an agency that was considering an acquisition and they put up these very colorful charts. The estimate for the project was $500 million. It's a lot of money. They continued going through the briefing, talking about all the things they had to do and there were statute driving when they had to meet these certain schedules. And I was still kind of like on this $500 million. So after they finished talking, I, I you know, raised my hand. I said, I'm sorry. You know, just back of napkin, $500 million is like 400 full-time equivalents, or FTEs as they're called. Uh, and they kind of like looked around at each other and they said, yeah, we actually think it's more than that. And I said, whoa, you know, that was the moment for me that I was like, this is the problem, right? Like you think you're gonna bring in 400 or more people, build a solution and get anything done quickly, efficiently and effectively. And the reality is that those numbers are because of all of these crazy requirements we've laid on historical contracts that the vendors then have to, you know, they have to meet those requirements. So they're a reflection of what we say we need. And so they add bodies to go to meetings that are three hours long every week and quarterly PMRs and create all this reporting documentation and evaluate the reporting documentation, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and so I said, you know, that's way too much. You know, take a very small fraction of that and I guarantee you we can get a contract in place and get product in the hands of users before that acquisition would ever get on the street. 
They didn't believe me, but they were willing to take a risk because they were kind of desperate. And we were able to do it. We were able to put a contract in place. Within a couple months, we had our MVP already ready. Then we did another acquisition, got another vendor to transfer. We transitioned the code over to the new vendor and uh, they continued working on through that well before the acquisition for the $500 million effort ever got underway. They scrapped that idea and we went with a whole new strategy. And, and that's, that's agile acquisition. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. So lastly, what does independent government cost estimates mean to you? Well, in industry, what independent government cost estimates mean to you is, well, first off, you're probably not gonna know what they are. That's too bad because it would be really helpful if you could know what the government was looking to spend rather than trying to bring them a shiny rock that might or might not meet their needs. But there are things in the acquisition, especially in an, in an agile development contract that should give you insight into what the government cost estimate is. The period of performance, sometimes they'll specify the number of people or at least in a range where they'll specify the number of teams and then you apply your process and the number of people and types of people that you would put towards that and that would generally get you towards the cost estimate. Um, other indicators of the cost estimate though are if they're using the simplified acquisition procedures under commercial contract, you know it can't be above seven million dollars. If they're doing a day small business, you know it can't be above $4 million. Uh, micro purchase, obviously can't be above $10,000. Know. So there are clues that you can use to figure it out and that can help you shape and scale your response. Um, it's always a good idea to ask the agency, you know, what are you looking to invest in this project? Like what scale, what size scale? Or if they won't give you that answer, how would they expect industry to best surmise the size of the effort they're looking to solve. You might not get an answer, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Nobody ever got in trouble for asking a question. So there you have it. That's independent government cost estimates, what they are, how they were traditionally done, how they should be done under agile contracting, and what does it mean to you? I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you did, give me a like on this video. Leave me some comments and suggestions for topics you want me to talk about. Remember to subscribe if you didn't already. And most importantly, keep innovating. Innovating. Cheers.